everybody welcome to my epic kitchen and I am going to be doing spaghetti squash uh, lasagna today and as I prepare I'm going to show you different ways that you can use your spaghetti squash now I'm looking up because I've got my camera on top of the fridge because I wanted to do the stove and the counter at the same time all right so I already clean I just took a normal size spaghetti squash and I've cleaned one side so I'm gonna get this in the microwave and then I'll just clean up the other one so all I did was you need a very very sharp knife to cut through them because they're pretty thick um, I just use a regular soup spoon and then just got all of the seeds out so what I'm going to do with this now so I'm just gonna put just a little bit of olive oil on it just a little bit and then a little bit of SPG like literally just a little bit now normally you would poke holes in this and put it in the oven for an hour it takes a pain it takes forever I'm just gonna use my little pastry brush here uh, uh, brush. Just get some of the oil on the outside you don't even have to do oil or salt and pepper i just like it because i'm doing the lasagna one i want a bit more flavor so you're going to take your multi-purpose steamer okay just take the tray out put it upside down so cut side down put the lid on it and remember to put a plate underneath i never remember to get the plate out before i start and then you want to put it in the microwave about seven minutes. And that's it for the spaghetti squash. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the ground meat going. Now I'm using our wok. And did you know that four normal swirls of oil in your frying pan is about a quarter cup of oil? So not really fast, just three, four. There we go. So I'm just going to heat that up. Now, you know, this summer I uh, did a, I did a class on um, using our burger press and did a whole bunch, flash froze them, and then had little hamburger packs. And as we've needed them since summer, we would just take two or three or four, however many we need, out of the bag. And because I flash froze them first, they don't stick together. So what I did is I'm going to use the rest of these because it's been about four months since I put it in and it's got seasoning in there and I don't want them in the freezer. So I'm going to use about half tonight and then I'm going to make meatloaf with the other half tomorrow. All right, so I'm just going to put my, but you can just use normal, regular ground beef. Right now, because this is, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, well, I guess it wasn't important, sorry. Because these are round uh, patties. I'm just using our ground meat separator to break it down. You actually get to see my husband for a while. Usually he's all over there making funny faces at me. So this is my husband, Keith. Still doing that. So I'm just gonna use the separator and it just breaks up the meat into just like like breadcrumbs kind of thing, which is what you want, unless you want big chunks, but I don't like big chunks. So I'm just gonna do that, mix that up. Alright, so I'm gonna do the other one. So you just want to take a, like a soup scoop or a soup spoon and then just work your way around it you don't want to take all of the sh all of the um, the strands out because that's what you're going to be eating but you want anything that's attached to the seeds out all right so i'm just going to scoop this last little bit out get this ready so when the other one comes out i can put this one in It is miserable day to day. You know, when I was a very young girl, I was at my maternal grandparents' farm. And uh, it was the third of whatever month we were in. And my grandfather was all excited. 
because they're farmers. And I remember asking him, you know, what was he so happy about? And he says, well, today is the third. And I says, okay. And he says, it had something to do with the moons and the planet and stuff. But what the weather is on the third of the month, doesn't matter where you live, it's pretty much going to be the weather for the rest of the month. Now, I was brought up at the age where anything your grandparents said you believed and because they were very wise. And now looking back, I think he was way younger than I, was, than I am now. But do you know, I have followed that religiously um, since then. And it's always almost completely true. You'll get a few days here and there that's not, it'll be the opposite. But for the most part, what the weather is on the third is what it ends up being the rest of the month. And I've been doing this in three provinces and it's still always the same. But today is the third. Happy birthday, Norman. Um, my youngest brother's birthday and uh, it's gray and wet and rainy and I'm not happy. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on here. Get this ready for, get the last of the SPG. And then I'm just going to, it's just like this. And I just use the brush just to get to the top of, so they're seasoning at the top. Because I want all of the noodles to have that flavor. All right, so that's done. Put that over there. Uh, and I've got, I'm going to add, this is just like a lasagna. So I'm putting all the stuff in that I normally do for lasagna. I was just realizing, oh yes, I did. I just thought of a second, did I even hit record? So I'm just going to, I've got onions already chopped. I'm going to add some peppers and some tomatoes. I like my lasagna, um, not huge chunks, but I like bites of stuff. I don't want it to be pureed. All right, so I move that over there. So what else can you do with spaghetti squash? Well, you can do taco spaghetti squash. So everything's going to be done the same way. So doing it, roasting it in the microwave. So that's all the same. So you mix it with a little bit of um, ground beef if you want. If you want chicken tacos, that's fine. If you want to use our easy peasy taco mix, um, that's even better. And then you add tomatoes, onions, and peppers. Mix it up in your fry pan. And then you've got um, Mexican spaghetti squash. So it'll be just like regular tacos, but you've got the strands. And another way to do it is your spaghetti squash soup. So you want to take about a quarter cup of butter, give or take. And then you want to saute one to two onions, um, uh, one to two big carrots. You can have more carrots if you want, depending on the size of the soup pot you've got. And one to two ribs of celery and about a quarter to a third head of cauliflower. And so you want to saute that, saute that for about five or seven minutes. So they're not mushy, but they've got that hard crunch out of it. And, um, and then you put it in your stock pot or use your stock pot to be sauteing it. And then after you're done that, when it's about the five or seven minutes, you want to cover all the vegetables with water. With a little bit, with a little bit extra. And then what you want to do is that you want to add about four tablespoons of our broth mix, any of our broth mix. I'll just turn this over. And then you want to bring it to a boil. And then once it's boiling, bring it to a, bring it down to a simmer and cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once that's done, 
get if you've got an emulsion blender that's fine just do that or you can put it in your blender get it um, blended so that it's like a cream soup that is so amazing taste so you want to use um, you're going to use our broth mix and you want to use um, our urban garlic whatever flavor that you want to put in there I'm going to just grab a fork make sure that this oh let's see if you can see this see it just very easily very easily shreds Sorry, grab another plate just gonna take this out and get the other one in I forget stuff. All right, now the meat's done. So I'm just going to get these veggies in there and get that sauteing. to add a can of crushed tomatoes. I'm going to add our marinara sauce. I'm going to add our garden veggie. This is probably one of my top 10 favorites. I use this for everything. I use it on top of my baked potatoes. I put in mashed potatoes. I put it um, when we're doing um, oven fries. I put it on there. We talked about doing bruschetta yesterday. I put it on there. I put it on pretty much all of my vegetables that I'm steaming. I just like the taste. It's just vegetables to me goes with vegetables. All right, so we are going to start shredding this. I'm gonna grab a towel because this thing is hot. So something else that you can do with your spaghetti squash is just plain marinara without any vegetables and then break the noodle take the noodles out and then just mix it with the marinara sauce just like you would with spaghetti so that's pretty much the most common that people use it for um, you can do um, ranch dip now this is really good doing it this way if you've got ground chicken so when you put it into roast what you want to do is use our creamy ranch that is really, really good with this. Do the roasting, or the steaming, I should say. And then you're gonna take some ground chicken or whole chicken that you've sliced up in little pieces. And you wanna get that browned a little bit and cooked. And then you want to add some uh, spinach and get that roasted and top it with mozzarella cheese, if you have mozzarella cheese. And then what you want to do after that is put it in the oven until it's nice and bubbly. And then you're ready to eat. Yeah, it's really, really good. But it's great to do that with um, the creamy ranch. Now you can also use our Alfredo seasoning pack. And instead of doing the marinara, do the chicken or ground turkey and use and make the sauce out of our Alfredo and then mix everything else the same. I'm gonna put all of these suggestions on after the video so that you'll have it in the comments. When we were lived in Saskatchewan, we had this deal, I guess you could say it, with one of the big commercial gardens. And he had a you know, the grocery stores in Safeway and all those, they would go and get his produce. And he also had a farmer's market. Well, we, the city had farmer's market um, twice a week. And then he would bring produce over there to sell. And hang on, let me just show you. So I've got pretty much all of the strands out of there. And here's Paul here. 
And let's keep and come and get some more strands out of here. Oh, I think that's about it. And so, what? Oh, you want to use some more? Okay. And so he would, um, we had this deal that we would go work with them in the spring and we would help them plant potatoes, corn, um, put the little seedlings of cauliflower. Yeah, I know, he does it much better. Um, cauliflower, the cabbages and stuff. And then we would go twice in the summer and we would go weed, weed for hours, just twice in the summer. And then in the fall, after he was done selling to the stores, we could come for free in this big warehouse that he had on the farm. We could go for free and get anything we wanted. And he was the one that told me that you make pumpkin pie with um, squash, not so good as squash, obviously. And I thought, ew. But I tried it, and uh, oh, it's the best pumpkin pie. I, well, I shouldn't say pumpkin pie. It's the best pumpkin pie I'd ever had. And we did this for years. And one day I didn't have any, so I made just a normal pumpkin pie. It was Thanksgiving or Christmas, and everybody was over, and everybody kept saying, "What's wrong with your pumpkin pie? It just doesn't it taste tinny." It was so funny that you know that's what they thought of because they were so used to having it made with the butternut squash. All right, so I'm gonna add my tomatoes in. My to if this is just crushed tomatoes. You could use um, diced tomatoes. You could use tomato sauce. Did you know that if you get a jar of prepared marinara sauce, you know, like, I don't know, Catelli's or whatever. Thank you. How much did you get up? Did you get some more out? Oh, wow, that's pretty good, good job. We have our little three-year-old great-grandson and that's it was his first word was he used to call it Zaza and that was him saying good job um, but did you know that you pay if you're going by per ounce or per milliliter 100 grams that you pay almost double the amount if you get a jar of prepared sauce and if you do if you get a can of plain tomato sauce and just add your sea snakes so you know think of that so there's your sale or your tidbit of news for the day so I'm just gonna add Oh, I guess I'm going to finish that jar. The lid on most of these jars are about a, a, a heaping tablespoon. I measured it one day. All right, so I'm just going to let that simmer for a minute, wait for the other one, and then I'm going to take some olive oil. I'm just, you know, just doing a nine uh, square nine pan, nine inch pan. Um, I like using avocado oil to uh, put on the bottom because it is lasagna and it just goes, it, the flavor just goes really well. You could put just normal olive oil, regular corn oil, whatever oil that you're using. So I'm just going to put just a little bit and I'm just going to give it a swirl. strands out of here. I'm gonna let that cool. I'm just gonna use start this one over. So just like regular lasagna you want to put your pasta sauce on the bottom. Just enough, and you're going to layer it just like you do with 
regular lasagna. So I put a little bit of sauce and then put some noodles on top. Shredded cheese. I just happen to have a blend of cheddar and mozzarella, so that's what I'm going to do. Put some more. I have done this before for our grandkids that love lasagna, don't like veggies, don't like squash, and they didn't even notice that they weren't eating regular lasagna noodles. So it's a great way to get your kids to eat healthy vegetables. All right, now this is going to be ready for the oven. And all you're going to do, because everything's cooked, so you're just going to do it until everything is golden and bubbly. So it's going to be about 15 minutes. All right, so I will let you go so you're not watching the paint dry in the kitchen or in this, in this case. Watch the lasagna bake, and I will come back when it's ready. All righty, take care and enjoy your spaghetti squash. When you, the next time you get spaghetti squash and you make something with it, please tell me if you use one of these ideas or if you have came up with one of your own ideas that's your family favorite. I'd love to get your ideas. Take care. Bye-bye.